This is WWE superstar Drew McIntyre, and you're listening to the WWE Podcast. The one that everybody wants, me. You're gonna acknowledge me. What's going on, everybody? Guys and girls, welcome back to another edition of the SmackDown Review right here on the WWE Podcast. As always, I'm one of the hosts of the show, Michael Ritter, aka Psycho Michael. You can find me on Twitter, Michael Five Ritter, and also one of the hosts of the Football Function Podcast. Available on all of your podcasting platforms. Joining me on this episode, per usual, my humble co-host, Young Jonathan, a.k.a. Juicy John. You can find him on Twitter, uh, at B-I-G-G underscore speaker. John, how you doing? How was your week? Uh, any quick WrestleMania comments? Uh, I am doing pretty good. And, of course, I mean, it's been a week, I guess you could say. Getting through the cracks in, what would you say? Ridges, I guess you could say, trying to smooth everything out yeah. throughout our schedule that we got going on at work and everything. But other than that, man, I'm good. Of course, WrestleMania comments. The only one I can say that I was really disappointed about was the Brock Lesnar and Omos. Yeah, I just what? didn't feel like it lived up to the potential okay. that it could have been. Other than that, man, I think everything kind of was great. Yeah. Yes, sir. It was a good card, I will say. I, I was... Very much, I guess, more happy with day one than okay. day two. You know, I liked all the things that happened day one. Didn't did McAfee come out day two, or was that day one as well? That was one. That was day one. Yeah, yeah. So day one was just all around better, yeah. in my personal opinion, especially the main event. I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. Well, you know, credit where credit is due. Roman Reigns retained, and who knows what's in store. Trying to look at it from like a big picture approach, and you know, just. Basically, look at it like the glass half full, I guess. Okay. Because, hey, there is no end game without Infinity War. So I'm going to tell you that right now. We just have to get through these hard times, as hard as it is. But eventually, we'll be back. You know, we'll uh, we'll be back maybe next year, Manny. I don't really know. I, I don't believe that Cody Rhodes is probably ever going to be as, as hot as he was going into the, that match. It'll be tough. Some people disagree with that. I'm going to let it play out. But just my personal opinion, it was an opportunity missed to really try to establish a star, a babyface star here. But they made their decision. I'm rolling with it. And let's see what happens. But I will say the uh, the tag team championships leaving the oh, yeah. Usos. That was heartbreaking. That was, that. that was, I feel like when, when you told me you were surprised about that, I was surprised I, that you were surprised. I didn't think it was going to happen. I did not. I felt like, if anything, it was going to be Roman Reigns losing one of the belts, you know, that little slight chance. So whatever little twist that they put into this, man, it worked, you know, because yeah. I was totally blown out the water. Let me say that. I um, see. I, I knew that the Usos were going to lose. I was very confident in that. It was just all but official in my book. Once they did lose, though, even though I knew it was going to happen, my confidence went very much down. And Cody Rose was like, damn, are they really going to take the legs out from under the bloodline like that? But so nonetheless, for me at that yeah. Nonetheless, uh, I feel like I was ultimately happy with with the decision. But here we are to talk about the SmackDown that's airing on April the seventh, two thousand twenty three. From do you know where? I did not catch that. I, I didn't know. catch it at the beginning, but I saw on Twitter where it was because I saw a, t- um, a report that Vince McMahon isn't there, but he did go over the, I guess the layout for the show the the script so to speak and he went over it virtually and of course minor changes were made but we are expecting triple h to speak at some point tonight the way smackdown opened was with a long video package highlighting wrestlemania in case you didn't see it and followed by a six-man tag match between the brawling brutes and imperium so gunther kaiser and vinci Versus obviously Sheamus, Sheamus, Butch, and Ridge Holland. The Brawling Brutes do win that one. She, uh, 
Butch ends up getting the pinfall, I believe, on... Was it Vinci? Yeah, it was. I'm 99% sure that that's what happened. But what did you think about that tag match? It did take up a little bit of time here. I mean, not, not a whole lot. Probably about a 12-minute six-man tag match. So I guess that's not long. So I maybe misspoke there. But did anything jump out to you as we were kind of breaking down this opening segment of the SmackDown review while you had one eye on the six-man tag match? Well, I mean, I guess I could say just Ridge Holland. I mean, of course, I kind of just blurted his name out. You know, he just looks a little bit more better in ring, I guess you could say. Yeah. A little bit smoother with his moves. So that was one thing that kind of stood out to me. Well, one thing that stood out to me is the fact that they had Imperium lose again. Just because okay. when I'm on the show with Casual Wrestling Fan, he points out that that technically counts as a loss for Gunther. Not, he didn't get pinned, but it's a six man tag match. And that's happened a lot. Live yeah. events, okay. just several times he's gotten losses on his record because of teaming with Imperium. So that trend continues. I wonder what this means. It seemed like after the match, whenever they were raising up Butch, it's almost like a, a symbolic way to say maybe some big things are coming for him. But what do you have to say? I was going to say maybe Gunther should maybe bring back those chops. That those he punishments? To. Yeah. Because, I mean, I guess if that's I was all for be, that. Was that I before mean, he was going? champion or was that already after he was champion? I think it was before. Okay. Yeah, I think barely coming in and stuff. But, yeah, man, if he goes back to that little direction, I think he'll get him back on track. For sure. But what do you think about po the possibilities of Butch maybe getting a push here? Oh, that'd be nice. Definitely get him going, I guess you could say. Cause, I mean, of course, it feels like he's like the number two guy there and everything. But yeah. Yeah, for him to uh, kind of get over, I think he'd be well-deserved. And it's well known that this is the time of year that you experiment with stuff. Mm -hmm. I remember, I don't know what year it was, maybe like 2019, I think it might have been, maybe 2018. Right after WrestleMania, they brought in Lacey Evans. And she was working with Becky Lynch, I think. Something like that. Mm -hmm. I don't really know for sure if it was Becky. I know it was a big-time uh, wrestler at the time, and people were kind of surprised. Like, damn, they're really going after her. They're trying to really make her seem you know, legit, and here we are. Still don't really know what we're getting with Lacey Evans. Mm -hmm. But either way, this this is just a really important time of the calendar to to figure some stuff out. Like, you got some time to breathe, you know? Like, it's almost like, for example, just to... I guess give a, a comparison is like when I start a Madden season, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to figure out my team. I know that in the playoffs at the end of the season, I'm going to be playing some user opponents and it's going to be pretty tough. I need to have my stuff figured out. So like week one, two and three, I have that pressureless feeling where I'm still, you know, ironing out the kinks. I'm still trying to figure things out with my roster yeah. and see what I have. It's kind of the same thing in WWE at this point in the year where we're after WrestleMania, you can start, long-term storylines or short-term storylines but nonetheless you have to start something seeds get planted and we kind of saw that on monday night raw i don't know if it's going to lead to anything with Sami Zayn, kevin owens versus the street profits because obviously we're going to get Sami Zayn in a match tonight with jay uso probably closing the show or something you know towards the very very end i would imagine that's going to be the main event right i mean you'd expect so Sami Zayn and jay uso they clearly deserve a main event spot so let's see What's coming up next here on the show? It looks like they're just doing a little bit of a raw recap, showing what happened with Cody Rhodes. What would you think about that as we have a little bit of time here to kill? What would you think about Cody Rhodes getting that F5 from Brock Lesnar? Well, I did not expect that, of course. I mean, Me neither. It was a big shock, but for it to happen, I guess, if Co if Cody Rhodes can beat Brock Lesnar, I guess that's like a good like stepping stone. You know, I would be... Okay, maybe he can. He does have that opportunity to go back and face Roman Reigns and get another chance, you know, because obviously right here rematch that yeah. they're calling for, but backlash. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like I said, man, if he if he beats Brock Lesnar, I think there's a high chance that he goes back and faces Roman Reigns. Well, number one, just seeing this highlight real quick, I have to remind you, <laughs> Solo. Okay, I wouldn't mind seeing Got a rookie of the year. Samoa. My number one pick. Samoan Spike. Did he get Rookie of the Year? He did. Okay. Congrats. Mm -hmm. A little pat on the back there. That is mm -hmm. a good pick because I'm not going to lie. When you did I had a little eyebrow raise. <laughs> I, I had him on my draft board nonetheless, but just, uh, you know, my, my draft, surprisingly, isn't looking too hot with LA Knight oh, yeah. going into the night. Not really having any relevance going on right now, but... I mean, I was shocked when I saw Brock Lesnar F5 Cody, honestly. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was shocked when I saw Brock Lesnar come out in the first place yeah. to team with Cody. I was like, yeah. what the hell is going on here? The pairing just didn't make sense from the jump. But as it was happening, I was like, I, you know, I, I kind of like this baby face version of Brock Lesnar. Like, it's fun. This is like this highlight we're watching right now, him coming out, just 
smiling, interacting with the fans, actually being himself from what I can tell. I really enjoyed this version of Brock, but it does seem like Monday night they, they put a pin in it. Yeah. And no more. We're, we're getting the beast, Brock Lesnar. We're going to find out his reasoning, I imagine, next Monday night. But, I mean, Cody Rhodes alone is, is a reason to watch Monday Night Raw because I really haven't had that many reasons to watch it over the past, like, I don't know, year, you know? Like, SmackDown's been so studded. Football season, obviously, takes a big, big chunk of the year of Mondays away from me to watch Raw live, I guess. So uh, I've just always been, or at least here in the past few years, been really SmackDown heavy. So to have somebody over on Raw that makes me want to tune in every week is definitely a good thing. But I'm looking forward to seeing what happens here because I don't think Cody Rhodes fares well at all against Brock Lesnar. Like, I don't. Hell no. I mean, they'll they'll probably most likely have him win somehow, but... I still just don't. I mean, realistically, my eyes are telling me, oh, man. Like, I saw whenever he was, like, lifting, like, at the opening segment when they said they were going to tag together and he was, like, lifting his arm up and stuff, you could just tell he was manhandling. And without yeah. even trying to, you know? Like, so just the yeah. the believability part is just out the window for me. Like, I think that it looked more like this. Like, we're watching F5 through the table, except there'll probably be about 15 suplexes. Just a very unpleasant situation for for Cody if he has to go against Brock in an actual sanctioned match but could be all part of the story like I said I think so man the 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 maybe we were just premature you know maybe this, I thought the moment was just a year in advance I don't know just, just seeing this little thing whenever he's stepping over and on, over and on it just kind of brought me back to where when Roman was stepping over Brock you know holding yeah those belts. but sure. my bad no 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 worries no worries we got Michael Cole talking to bad news Wade Barrett I, you probably haven't seen him under the bad news gimmick, have you? No. You seen no highlights, nothing? No. Well, I, I, I've seen a match with him in there, but I don't know if it was. I mean, it was like. Name, I guess you could say. I, I only got to see about a year or two of it whenever I started watching wrestling again. Yeah. But he had probably five or six years prior to me actually coming back. Ooh, we got Caleb Braxton backstage. We'll see who she's interviewing and we'll let you know what was said. Well, Caleb Braxton's guest ended up being Paul Heyman and Solo Sokoa, but there really wasn't any interview that took place because Jey Uso approached. Well, I mean, at first, she asked, basically, what did, what the hell happened? Why did Brock Lesnar do what he did? He starts hyping up the bloodline about how they main evented WrestleMania both nights. But before he could even really finish what he was going to say, Jey Uso walks up. And, you know, Solo's immediately, which I noticed, immediately just glaring a hole at him. And that just right there kind of sets the tone. Like, Solo's doing a damn good job at being a heel because he makes me not like him. Like, I'll be honest. And that's good. That's a good thing, you know? Like, that's that's something that I've, I've said multiple times. Like, if, if you're legit like Roman Reigns, he's finally starting to reach that point of being a heel where I'm like, man, I've been waiting for this where I feel this way about him, you know? But either way, um, Solo kind of glaring a hole through Jay. Jay asked, well, have you guys seen Jimmy? I haven't heard from him. Is he here? Whatever. He asked both of them. Paul Heyman clarifies specifically that he is not here tonight. Roman Reigns told him to stay home because he wanted to see main event Jey Uso elevate and solve this Sami Zayn problem once and for all. So that's, you know, what's going to happen. And we basically do get the confirmation that it is going to be in the main event slot. But after Jey Uso walked away is where things kind of got interesting because Paul Heyman tells Solo, he solves our Sami Zayn problem tonight, or you solve our problems tonight. You fill in the blanks there. Use your imagination. You know Paul Heyman. He is definitely a craftsman when it comes to these types of promos. So I don't really, oh, like, I mean, you know what he's getting at. It's, it's pretty clear, but it's just imagining it. Like, that's his brother. You know, mm-hmm. that's Solo's older brother. So the fact that he's most likely going to, um, to turn on him at some point. Hopefully, I mean, I don't, there, there's no way it's going to be denied. Yet. But are they going to have Sami Zayn lose? So that's the thing that it, like that it gets you to because if Sami Zayn wins, I think we know what's going to happen. But Sami Zayn's red hot right now. He's carrying one half of the undisputed tag team championships. Kevin Owens isn't going to sit there and you know let him get cheated out. You know he ain't going to let him get jumped. So. Hey, hey, hey! A lot of a lot of juicy stuff like that. That's one thing I will say is. I like that we're already starting to see that next chapter in this yeah. because it felt like, at least in my mind, that WrestleMania was going to be the climax, so to speak, of a beautiful storyline 
that ended ultimately in Roman Reigns losing the championships. But after that, even if he lost, I knew that there was going to be some sort of implosion mm -hmm. with the bloodline. And we're seeing it before our very eyes. So it's like, oh, man, we're here. Like, even, even though he won the championships, we're somehow still here because they lost theirs. And that's something that is going to definitely make this thing pretty interesting. But, I mean, I'm, I'm sure that you're, you know, enjoying this, the beginnings of this program just as much as I am. Well, this is kind of tough. I mean, I, I've told you off air the direction I think it's going to go with Jey Uso being the one that dethrones Roman Reigns. Long story. But for it to be just happening, I guess you could say, like right here, I mean, I, I, I don't think. I'm hoping that that's not what they're trying to do and everything like that. But ultimately, I think it's going to come down to Jey Uso. He's going to be the main person of this story, and he's going to be the one that wraps it up, I guess you could say. Yeah, for sure. Uh, wait, so wait, uh, you think Jey Uso is going to be the one that, you know, okay, I see that. I, yeah, that, yeah. that yeah, for sure wasn't an agree. I'll no, go ahead okay. and clarify no, that. For sure, sure. Yeah. I mean, that, that's just my thought on it. No, I got you. Like I got so, you. I mean, got to roll with it, and I'm going to stick with it. You've so. been with it for a while now, yeah. so I know it's not just like you're coming up on it. I, I've heard you tell me that before in the past. Uh, you know kind of where I mm -hmm. soured on that, where I, because I, I was on with you. I was like, okay, this I believe it, and then kind of soured off. But, I mean, it still makes sense. I do, though. I think that as we stand right now, Solo is more likely. And I know you don't so, agree to, to, to dethrone the, Roman oh, okay. down the okay. line. And I know that you don't agree, and mainly because, you know, he hasn't held any mid-card championships, no U.S., no IC. Hey, neither has Jay. Jay has only hold, held the tag team championships, albeit more than anybody, damn near. He is one of I mean, the Usos are... I mean, it's in my book, from the tag teams that I've watched, it's the Hardy Boys and it's the Usos. Okay. And then the Dudley Boys. Before these past couple years, the Dudley Boys had that number two spot solidified. But the Usos surpassed him, you know, right before our very eyes. And that's just kind of how I feel about it. So I, I do I do respect him as a team. You know, I've, I've been watching since like now, late 2014, early 2015, all the way here. Now it's been like, what, eight years? The Usos have been relevant and, you know, at least one of the more featured tag teams the entire time. So I get it. It is a little bit apples to oranges because although Jay hasn't had a mid-card title, He's been main event Jey Uso for damn near two years now, you know? Yeah. He's been in that main slot. So, solo, brief stint in NXT. He's kind of been riding the coattails on this, asked to do very little with Simone Spike, so I get it. Right now, it seems it seems far-fetched, but from what I've seen on the internet in terms of how high they are on Solo, like I heard that they do believe he's going to be a main eventer one day. So... I mean, it, it, like I said, it would be tough because he would have to turn babyface, and that's just something that I don't see happening anytime soon. So it is a little bit of a toss-up. Maybe we can get the uh, the the listeners, the people of the WWE podcast to chime in there. Maybe we'll get a poll. See if Matt wants to put a poll. Yeah, Who is more yeah. likely in the bloodline to dethrone Roman, Solo or Jay? And I do believe, just putting it out there, I do believe that you will get more – Supporters on that, I think, because so. it's a little bit less out on a limb. But it's no, there's nothing wrong with that. Like I said, you've felt it for a while now. I'm just saying, like in terms of right now, I would understand why the uh, why the listeners would lean that way a little bit. But continuing on here in the show, SmackDown, that is, we're getting a one on one match: Ricochet versus Ivar. This is what you call weight classes don't exist in the WWE, and. It seems like they should. I know. I know they never will, honestly. But when you see something like this, it's like, oh my gosh, how do we? How do we see something like this take place? But I still think that Ricochet has a shot. I will say, as the match is going on right now, I don't expect it to go on very much longer because it's been going on for a few minutes already. Don't anticipate them giving this one a whole lot of time. But I don't know. I mean, because the Viking Raiders seem like they've been getting a little bit of a push here in the tag team division. Ricochet and Strowman didn't they win mm -hmm. at WrestleMania that showcase? Yeah. Okay, so they're, they're getting a little bit of steam behind them as well. I just noticed the uh, choice of facial hair for Ivar, the three or four, I believe, braids down the beard. Oh, is that five? Dang, they just keep popping up. I'm just missing <laughs> them. But all right, yeah, that's, uh, that's an interesting look. I, I dig it, though, for, for what his gimmick is, you know, what his, what his whole shtick is. And uh, really quickly here, time out, I wanted to give a shout-out to the WWE Podcast for hitting that number 19 in... Oh. 
you know, the wrestling podcast in yeah. America, cracking the top 200 sports podcast total. That's massive. That is absolutely huge for sure. So definitely yeah, shout out to the listeners because that's definitely you guys for downloading and all that stuff. But for sure, wanted to give a shout out to everybody involved, all the other hosts on the shows and everybody who contributes to the mailbag, all that good stuff. Just, yeah, it's a fun time to be part of this this team. I'm definitely proud to be, you know, a small part of it, as I'm sure you are as well. Yes, sir. And then, of course, I do have a, I guess, since we're on this little shout out thing, a late shout out. I'm so sorry. Mueller beautiful south africa sorry about your birthday last week it was on the 31st we had the opportunity to do it on the friday of last week and i just totally blanked it man but yeah shout out to you happy birthday late i guess you could say you wanker hey i i have them written down and i just that that was the one week that i didn't it was the go home show i mean there was a lot on our plate and man yeah it, it was just a little slip of the mind but yeah Good shout out right there. For I don't know though. if I got to tell the, the, oh, I have not for sure. I have not gotten a chance to tell the listeners. Longtime listeners know for sure, at least for the, the past year, I was talking about it, how I hadn't thrown up in oh, yeah. a long time. Well, I threw up on Monday. It wasn't like a sickness throw up. I just, I'm going to be completely honest, guys. I ate like a, mm. like a, like a slob. I, <laughs> I said some non PG descriptions on my other podcast, Football Function. If you want to go check it out over there, maybe even tell a friend. Shut but uh, I definitely, I paid for it on Monday and I broke my streak. Damn it. Damn. I had a year streak going and like to the day. And dude, I will say, because my belly button stuff that I, you know, had going yeah. on two years before that, WrestleMania weekend. I don't know what it is about WrestleMania weekend, but. I don't know, maybe I'm just going too hard, doing something like, like even, you know, my buddy Caleb, who's in here again with us, he even said, I'm just, it's from the excitement, I'm getting too psyched for WrestleMania, you yeah. know, and yeah, I, uh, you could even attest to this past one to it, because that, man, the the chili dogs, obviously, that's just a tradition for mm-hmm. WrestleMania, and the pizza, and then so much in between that I'm not proud of, I'm not even going to go ahead and continue on with the list, <laughs> but we do get a shooting star press from Ricochet, covering Ivar, and he does seal the win here. So I had, I did, I, I felt good about Ricochet. Although I will say, you know, the um, the differences in the weight classes, like I was saying, maybe had me a little bit uneasy, not so confident in the pick, and because the way that the Viking Raiders have been presented. But don't sleep on Ricochet and what he has coming for him in 2023. I mean, it just makes sense. The dude has been an absolute workhorse. Oh yeah, not the best on the mic. He's not doesn't have the most depth as a character, but he's phenomenal in the ring. Probably the best right now in WWE. He's, I mean, there aren't too many people that are better than him. I'll tell you, that's a very short list. I mean, if you actually broke it down, you could, you probably could point to a couple that just pound for pound. If you just take styles out of it and all that stuff, then, you know, they might have a, a, a say-so in it. But we're going to go ahead and check this backstage segment with the Tag Team Champs really quickly. We'll be right back. Okay, we got a little bit of an update on the Tag Team Champions, I guess, if that's what you want to call it. They're just backstage in their locker room admiring their championships but Kevin Owens is pretty much excited for the opportunity Sami Zayn has tonight to beat Jey Uso to finally put the bloodline saga behind him and all that good stuff Sami agrees however he doesn't feel right something doesn't something feels off I guess is is the way that he said it and long story short he wants to talk to Jey Uso he feels like he has to he feels a quote-unquote obligation to uh to have a chat with him and I gotta be honest I have these moments too sometimes where you just have a, a gut feeling and you just know you got to do something. Like you're just like, oh man, like I know I shouldn't. It doesn't feel right. Like I know that it's probably not going to end well, but something's telling me I'll feel better if I do this. And that's kind of what Jey Uso's getting at. And Kevin Owens knows, he's like, hey, I know I can't talk you out of this, but I will say, I mean, you know what happened, right? We we took their titles. We ended their streak. And the reason why they're in hot water with Roman Reigns is probably because of us. So you think that you're just going to walk in there, have a nice conversation with him. It's probably not going to end well for you. Sammy knows. He says, screw it. So I'm, I'm assuming we're going to get that at some point. Um, what would you think about that little backstage segment with the champs? Well, honestly, it was just funny. I was trying to think about that little part where he was like, I know you're going to do it anyways because I know you. Type yeah. stuff. You know, it was just funny. But other than that, man, for him to – for him to feel obligated to have to talk to him, I, I don't really see the direction that he's trying to do that, but I guess there was a, a I don't know, man, because it's, it's hard because, like, even, I don't even know, whenever uh, Jey Uso was saying, you know, he ter- he turned on him, he called him my brother and stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, 
after that little cut or tie, you know, it's cut right there, like you'd figure, you know, okay, let's do what we got to do, you know, get the belts as they did and kind of just walk away from it. But I don't know. I don't, I don't know what he needs to say, but has me for a little twist here. That's for sure. Oh yeah. I mean, it's getting good. And I wonder what that feeling is for Sammy. Like if he knows that Jay's in trouble. And just the fact that he really was his friend, you know, like, mm-hmm. that's just kind of, you know, eating at him a little bit. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I guess, I mean, for, because I've seen, like, pictures of where, you know, that little turnaround where Jay Uso did and where Sammy said that he's just, like, something to Roman. He got all mad, I guess you could say. I don't know if you've seen it on Twitter, but sorry I didn't describe that that well. But I, I've seen that, and it makes sense, you know, because... Jay has been manipulated, yeah. you know, into this whole little situation that he's been in. You can kind of see, like, the uh, facial expressions and everything like that. But maybe Sammy <laughs> has to get him in that yeah. that mind, I guess you could say, you know, kind of how he got him out of that hothead thing, stuff like that. Maybe he can talk him into seeing the or opening his eyes, I guess you could say. That look, just sidebar here. That look on Sammy's face whenever he was hitting the haluva kick on Jay, like when he oh. just like, that was poetry right there. Like that, <clears throat> excuse me, to end that that match that way. That was just that was beautiful. But anyways, after that little interaction with Kevin and Sammy, we see Raquel Rodriguez and Liv Morgan come out. I didn't like I told you I don't see the the card before the show starts most of the time unless it just you know pops up in front of my face. Do you know who they're going to go up against here? Yeah, uh, Natalia and Shotzi. Okay. See, I wasn't aware of that, but I'm I'm down with it. Oh, yeah, sure. for sure. Yeah, I think it'll be a good little match, but I don't see no direction here. Quick but, pick? Oh, Raquel and Liv. I'm with you. I'm with you. This is actually our Easy. team here. Yeah. You know, because, you know, I'm, I'm on the Raquel train. Peace You're on the Liv Peace wagon. Over. It works. Yeah, ooh, but now they're on a tank here, so we yeah. might both be in some, in some trouble. We'll see what happens, though. We'll let this match play out. And uh, we'll let you know who ends up winning. And just like we predicted, Raquel Rodriguez, Liv Morgan win the match, Oblivion on Shotzi Blackheart. So that means Liv Morgan and Raquel, red hot, going into their championship match on Monday Night Raw uh, against Lita and Becky Lynch. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, that's going to be a good one. I can't wait to watch that. But right after that, we get a little bit of a backstage segment. Some 2K action, Madcap Moss going up against... Xavier Woods playing some 2K. Thought that was pretty funny. And then LA Knight comes up and he's starting to gripe about how we had Bad Bunny, we had Logan Paul, and many others. Who else? Was there any others? Celebrities? Okay, maybe I missed them. More, yeah. okay. I missed them. Snoop Dogg. That's another yeah. one that he mentioned. But nonetheless, he's saying, What the hell were they doing there? And I wasn't there whenever we were in LA. The people want to see LA Knight. Xavier Woods, here's enough. He stands up. Look, dude, you can stay here and complain about your shortcomings, whatever. Like, I know you're butt hurt because what do you say? You didn't get patted on the head by mm-hmm. daddy on his big day or something like that. And, you know, you could stay here and do nothing about it. Or you can be like me and go create your own solution, which I thought was a nice, a nice little twist there. Shout out to Xavier Woods as someone who, you know, creates content. I know Xavier Woods probably put a lot of work into his YouTube channel. And the fact that it's, you know, massive and he probably has a whole nother, like, career outside of wrestling that's badass but either way uh la knight breaks that controller he walks away xavier woods has to be held back so that was kind of funny but um so we're clearly getting la knight versus xavier woods we're going that direction i'm here for it i mean xavier woods trying to get a little bit more i've noticed he's starting to get a little bit more solo exposure okay on wwe tv i mean Big E, obviously, everybody knows what the situation is there. Kofi Kingston's dealt with injuries himself. He's not getting any younger. He's been around for a very long time. Xavier Woods might have more gas left in the tank than his counterparts or than his partners, I should say. So, I don't know. I like that they're starting to venture out a little bit. You know, get him away from the New Day a little bit. Like, I I wouldn't mind the New Day having a little bit of, like, a silent death. Like, just silently, slowly go away, you know? We don't need to see some big one of them turns on the other one. They could just always support each other and just, you know, slowly let the New Day start to fade out so to go into the sunset. Because I don't believe they want to turn turn on each other, so they're probably not going to. But I don't know. That's kind of just always how I've uh, 
how I've thought that it, it would be cool, I guess. I don't know. As soon as I found out they weren't unwilling to, to have like a, a turn moment happen where one of them turns heel or something like that, I was pretty set on thinking that, um, you know, it might be like a slow type of thing, like a slow death. But either way, Triple H is walking to the ring right now backstage. I think that we're going to get his King of Kings song, the bow down to the king. Okay. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Every now and then they'll surprise us with the game, you know? I think we can get that one. I well, that was, uh, we could always hope. I the guess. one you came out with on Raw, I believe. Oh, we get green lights? I don't know. Let's see. Oh, King of Kings. Either way, um, Motorhead, shout out. They have several songs. They've done several songs for Triple H and Evolution, amongst others. But we're going to see what uh, the COO of WWE has to say. I have a feeling I already know what he's going to say, but uh, I guess we'll see if we're going to get surprised here. We'll let you know. Okay, so I was wrong. I did not know what Triple H was about to say. Um, so long story short, I mean, he went on about WrestleMania and how great it was, patting himself on the back. We know the whole shebang. But in a few short weeks, we get the WWE draft. And that's just a coincidence that in three weeks is the NFL draft. Just a coincidence. But I do... Uh, man, I, I love a good draft. So, and Triple H said this one is going to quote unquote change the game. And he looked into my soul when he said it. So, I, I mean, I want you already know what I said multiple times after I got that news. Yeah. I've seen this happen before when Batista and John Cena <laughs> switch shows back in the day whenever they were both champions. Now, we only have one champion right now. And I imagine Fox does not want to lose him. But there's only one move that can quote-unquote change the game and make it like a really massive one, if you're asking me. Now, he shows up on Raw sometime, from time and time again. But I feel like in this draft, in order for it to be remembered as one of the biggest, Roman Reigns has to be involved. Like he, His name has to be attached to it for it to be considered one of the biggest ones. You know, that's kind of where I look at it and... I mean, I don't know. I'm I'm for it, you know. Oh, yeah. Like, oh yeah, we're about to get some new wrestlers on our show to talk about. You know, there's a lot that we really haven't gotten to break down on a weekly basis. I do hope some stay for sure. We'll kind of get into that through these next few weeks. We'll talk about the ones that we definitely hope stay on SmackDown, and we hope, or we'll talk about the ones that we hope come to SmackDown. So, looking forward to that. But what do you think about that announcement? Just the fact that we're getting a draft. Well, I mean. I guess it's good that we're going to get a little shakeup of everything. I mean, I felt like the SmackDown roster as it is right now is pretty Damn solid. Good. You know, I, I'm kind of disappointed that we're going to kind of shake that I up. Know. But I'm not looking forward to that aspect. But. I mean, I understand. I mean, business side of it and stuff like that, if they have to go that direction to get the... Some fresh matchups and things like that. Yeah, like, at least something to build, you know. So, I mean, other than that, man, I, I'm i for it. Like I said, bring some new faces over here to this side as well. And maybe get some new storylines going. Yeah, there's there's definitely some negatives and positives. You know, oh, like yeah. the, if we lose Roman Reigns, that's gonna suck. That's must see TV. I feel like SmackDown will take a massive hit. I don't know if Fox is gonna be okay with that, but you know it is what it is. Like I said, I feel like he has to be involved. So I wonder how they're gonna do it. Like, are we going to get one announcement every week? But he said in a few short weeks we get the draft. That makes me feel like it's a one night thing, which yeah, I hope. That would be nice. That's so fun. Like yeah. those, those are some of the best episodes to watch. Whenever you actually get, you know, a full night of just draft picks, and we could break down how it all went. That would be yeah. so awesome. I, I really hope that's how it is. Especially if it's in three weeks. Oh my! God. I just hope it's not on that Friday of rounds two and three of mm-hmm. the draft. Yeah. John might be. I'm glad, I'm glad you're really high on solo because you <laughs> may be uh, rolling solo that night. But we'll see. We'll cross that bridge whenever we get there. Nonetheless, yeah. um, I am excited for uh, for this WWE draft just to get new faces, like you said, and some new people over here. I mean, back in the day, these were always some of the funnest times. Just getting a chance to because when the brand split actually meant something, and it was very rare to see RVD go to SmackDown or Booker T go over to SmackDown. It was just, I don't know. It was always something I look forward to. And the fact that we're getting it now, I, I you know couldn't be happier. But after we get Triple H's announcement, he actually introduces Rhea Ripley. We, they come out. She the, the patting on the back continues, right? She pats herself on the back for beating Charlotte Flair. 
Dominic Mysterio tries to go in, but they, oh my God, the crowd does not let him that get a wild. word in. That was wild. They were just drowning him with booze. Finn Balor, he has a little bit of like a Lloyd Christmas haircut going on up top with the, the little cut scissors there. It looks mm-hmm. like he did it himself, but clearly we all know why. He got his dome split by uh, Edge in that Hell in a Cell match. Yeah. Pretty wild, huh? 14 staples, he said. 14. There, when I was in the first grade, there was this kid that I remember we were in music class. And he was wearing, like, this little bucket hat. Like, it was, like, a little colorful bucket hat. And I was like, why the hell are you wearing? Like, I just remember asking him, I was like, why are you wearing that hat? Like, why, like, why you know? Yeah. And he remember he took his hat off. He said, I have these. And there were, like, five staples in his head. For and, real? like, he, that was just, like, to cover it up, you know, obviously. But as a first grader seeing that, I was like, what the hell is going on? Yeah. Like. Staples in your head. The only time I saw staples in somebody's head was Chucky. <laughs> Bride of Chucky. He got oh, you know, stitched back together and stuff. But, yeah, so that was pretty wild. But, yeah, shout out to Finn Balor, dude, for finishing that match after that. Yeah. When dude. I saw all that blood just trickling, man, I was just like, oh, this is done, you know. Like, middle of the ring and just staying, like I should say. And I just can't believe he finished it up. If I have that little piece of skin in the bottom of a fingernail come off, I'm done for the day. Yeah. And Finn Balor's over here with a massive gash in his head. Just completely split. But anyways, it's just your typical, you know, Rey Mysterio's a terrible father. Dominic Mysterio pulled his punches for WrestleMania. They call out Bad Bunny, reference what happened at WrestleMania, and then obviously this past Monday night on SmackDown just to kind of lead in. That right there. Yeah. To lead into what's likely going to be a tag team match, Priest and Dominic versus Rey and Bad Bunny in Puerto Rico. That'd be nice. But uh, yeah, that, that's going to be pretty tight. Backlash. But either way, we get a, a tag team match. Rey Mysterio comes out. He's accompanied by LWO, Latino World Order. Do you think that they're they're no longer LDF? I, I think they'll still be considered LDF. Okay. Yeah. Just just the the group name, I guess you could say Judgment Day in a way. For sure. Um, I guess we'll see. You know, yeah. I guess we'll see uh, kind of how this plays out. But nonetheless, they're all repping the gear. It looks kind of cool, them coming out like that. Why not? You know, I like factions. Yeah. I like unique factions, too. And this is one that we haven't seen in a really long time. It's really cultured, you know, keeping all of them together. So I think that's, especially if they're going to Puerto Rico, you know, like mm-hmm. having this faction being relevant right now. Like that's just, they seeing, they're seeing dollar signs in their eyes. I can only imagine how many LWO shirts are going to be in the crowd. Ooh, a nice little double suicide dive. With Santos Escobar and Rey Mysterio taking out Priest and Dominic. It's just crazy seeing now. Rey Mysterio, he refused to hit his son. Now all of a sudden, he's just, you know, screw it. We're having a tag team match. Let's do this right <laughs> on SmackDown. Like, let's just, let's just go out. I don't know. I just think that's kind of funny that it yeah. took him literally getting in his mom's face and, you know, taking shots at his sister and all that stuff. That was like ultimate respect or disrespect right there. 100%. That's mm-hmm. why I understand why. But it's like... Now that he broke down the wall, the floodwaters are just coming through. Oh, yeah. You know, it's like, oh, actually, that one time when you're 11 years old and you wouldn't shut the hell up, I'm <laughs> that kind of just that memory popped up in my head. Now he's just, you know, he's just having a little bit too much fun with it. But oh, yeah, man. I guess we'll let this match play out. I did not know there was a new Evil Dead movie coming out. I will say, just I know that you are you, are you big on horror movies or no? no? Okay, I wasn't sure, sure. but that's that's a. The Evil Dead series, just they have movies that came out like in the 80s and stuff. And I actually have an Evil Dead, the, the one over there, Ash, he has yeah. a gun kind of pointed up with, with his hand missing. He, he might be hard to see. Just, I mean, there's a lot of characters in here, but he's one of them and he's from the Evil Dead. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I'm probably going to maybe, I don't know, man, I can't watch movies like that anymore now that I think about it. They just mess with my head. I don't know why. I, I just, I used to be able to enjoy all kinds of movies, you know. Horror, action, fighting. I, I love fighting movies. Like, number yeah, one, you true. give me some martial arts move, like movies, my inner Power Ranger comes out, and I'm just, <laughs> I'm all for it, you know? So I'm definitely all, you know, I'm all about the martial arts movies. Comedy, things like that, I'm all good. But I've noticed, I don't know why. Scary movies, they just, they mess with my head. And I, I mean, Maybe shouldn't be saying that, you know, on a podcast and setting myself up to maybe get roasted a little bit. I'm not saying I'm scared of them. They mess with my head. There's enough crazy things going on in this world oh, yeah. that you got some real stuff to worry about. I don't know about putting the, the fake hypothetical dude coming in your house, slicing your throat, putting that in your head. I was going to say, the whenever I was referred to watch the 
Jeffrey Dahmer thing, you know, that kind of like blew my Did mind. you watch it? I watched it, yeah. But the whole thing? The whole thing. Okay. But like you said, horror movies, I mean, they've always kind of just been a back of the bus type of stuff for I me. I used to love them. But, yeah. I mean, I still do. I'll watch the, you know what, out of Chucky. You know, like the Chucky series just came on. We watched that. Liv Morgan getting stabbed, man? Oh. Dang. I'm not gonna lie, that was cool. I love when <laughs> I love when my worlds collide like that, and just seeing her, you know, get gutted oh, like that. Okay. She almost got her throat slashed. Yeah, definitely don't uh, don't want that to happen. But yeah, I mean, I don't know what it is. What happened? It's like you know, you kind of get old. Like at some point, I stopped being able to ride roller coasters. You know, like I don't know about that. One. Just I'm just getting. I don't know why. Like they made me throw up. What? I don't know why either. You're I mean, it's not like I'm from your stomach. To it's your not like I'll throw up the... every time. Dude, same thing with video games. I can't even play like a freaking, like a, a single character game, you know, like where I, you oh, got to okay. follow them yeah. and go through somewhere. I don't I know why. Mean, I can't, I just can't do it. Yeah, like motion sickness? Maybe. Uh, that's That sounds about right. But dude, I don't know what happened to me, man. Just getting old, I guess, or something <laughs> along those lines. But either way, we'll kind of get back in here. You know, we, uh, we're in a commercial break. So instead of giving you guys a commercial break, we give you some... Uh, some mid-show banter, but we're still getting this tag team match here. Damian Priest going for a cover on Santos. He kicks out right at about one and a half. Who do you pick to win this one? Man, it's kind of tough. I'm going to go over here judge him day, though. I, I Keep don't know some why. heat on him? I don't, yeah, I'm just going to stick on this side for right now. The LWO, you know, being new, I guess, kind of yes. got to go through it. You know, kind of build their self up in a way, in my eyes, I guess you could say, but... Yeah, I think Judgment Day is going to pull this one off. Ooh, dang. Zelina Vega, that green. Mm -hmm. That looks dope. But anyway. Did you see um, the mask she was wearing yeah. at first? That kind of threw me off. I'm not going to lie. I was uh, I was noticing that. But I once I saw the matching shirt, it's kind of distracted me a little mm -hmm. bit. But see, you made some valid points there, I will say. Just number one, the newness of the team. We don't need them to be, like, established. Although a new team, you don't want them to lose right out of the gate. But I think that when it comes to heat, like the judgment they have, you don't want to blow that off. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't make them lose until Backlash. Like, I literally wouldn't make them lose until Bad Bunny and okay. Rey Mysterio, you know? I mean, it's only a few weeks away, so it's not like it's a crazy long time or a crazy winning streak. But you want them to be as hot and have as much heat as you possibly can, you know, with, with the crowd. Nice little Huracarana there by Rey Mysterio on his son nice. Dominic. Got him in the corner. Throwing him to the other turnbuckle, but we do get a reversal, followed by another reversal by Rey Mysterio. Ooh, off the second rope. Ooh, Dominic Mysterio going into his bag a little bit. That's rare. I, I've always I've been low on Dominic. I feel like he gets a little bit like he was so bad on the mic and as a character, people just I guess told themselves, well, he's good in the ring. He just needs to get better at this stuff. I'm like. He's not good at that either. <laughs> like for as good as good as what he should be, you know. Like now he's yeah. gotten better. He's gotten better all around, character, promos, in the ring. Yeah. But for a little bit there, I, I'm going. I'm, I was very much so saying Logan Paul is better than Dominic Mysterio. You know, NXT. Logan's a beast. All that stuff. I feel like Dominic should have gone to NXT. I understand he kind of ooh, he kind of got um you know thrust into the spotlight with his father having the tag team little run with them and then just getting all that little bit of exposure. But early on, I don't know. It's tough because it's just like other sports, you know. Mm -hmm. Marvin Harrison Jr., he's a wide receiver for Ohio State. He's probably going to have a lot of expectations. Arch Manning, who's yep. Peyton Manning's nephew. You know, if you are somebody who comes from a legend like that and, you know, you're that next generation, you know, the expectations are there, the spotlight's there, and Dominic, he didn't have, you know, that opportunity to have the NXT run. Zelina Vega getting involved. Her hair is very... Very unique. I noticed that last week, or maybe it was WrestleMania. I'm not sure exactly when I, when I noticed it. But, yeah, that silver that goes down into the green, mm -hmm. that's dope. But, um, yeah, Dominic Mysterio, I'm impressed with him and his growth here lately just as a whole character. I feel like Judgment Day, this little chapter in his career is probably going to look back on where he actually got his legs underneath him. Oh, okay, Zelina Vega running, throwing steel chairs behind her. Now they're going to the crowd. This match feels like we're entering the final stages. Dominic getting in prime position for a 6-1-9. And uh, he's tagging in Santos. He's going to hit the 6-1-9 first, though, really quickly. Rey Mysterio goes back. Oh, here comes Damian Priest. Yep, you're about to get your prediction correct here. Not sure exactly what it is. Some massive choke slam. Do you know what that move's called? 
I have no idea, but he just pinned Santos Escobar. We get a Judgment Day win, like John predicted. We'll see how this um, post-match shenanigans... Ooh, Rey Mysterio, a little bit of a drop kick. I had a feeling something was going to happen here. But uh, either way, we'll, we'll kind of let this play out a little bit. We'll see what happens next, and we'll be right back. Okay, we're back. Sami Zayn did approach Jey Uso backstage, tried to convince him to... Uh, it doesn't have to do it. doesn't have to be this way. He tells him, hey, everything I've predicted up to this point has happened. We said we were going to beat you. We beat you. It's obvious that Solo's looking at you like he just wants to drop the hammer any minute. He's trying to warn him pretty much what's to come if he doesn't you know, take advantage of this opportunity. And just really quickly, I, I, you guys got to let us know. Are these tattoos new? Why would I just now be noticing them? Is it because he wears a shirt most of the time? I don't know. I, I feel like he doesn't always wear a shirt, you know? Yeah. So I don't know. That's why I'm like... It's it's just the side tattoos. They don't look brand new, but they, I don't know. I just guess I haven't seen them before. I don't know. I figured you would tough. know. Yeah. You're a big J guy. I mean, it, it looks like it's been there. Honestly. Yeah, it doesn't look uh, like a fresh tattoo. But yeah, either way, I um, freaking put my mind on it, but Jay really doesn't say anything to Sammy mm-hmm. whenever Sammy's telling him that. It looks like he might about to be. It looks like maybe Sammy had kind of gotten through to him. I don't really know because it's hard to tell because. Jey Uso literally looked like he was on Sami Zayn's side and all of a sudden super kicked his head off. And you don't really, you know, know what's coming up next whenever it comes to uh, old Jey Uso. But we hear some some chaos in the background. Off in the distance, we hear, you know, some poles being smashed around, a bunch of voices yelling. And it's pretty evident that Kevin Owens was attacked by that bastard, Solo Sokoa, Dang. backstage. So, sorry, Sammy. You're likely going to get cheated out tonight. So, I uh, hope you enjoy taking a fat L because that's likely what's going to happen to you. But, nonetheless, we're going to get this main event. Jey Uso versus Sami Zayn. It's probably going to be an absolute banger. What oh, do you yeah. think about it? Well, I mean, it's kind of crazy that this is kind of happening, especially like uh, how Wade Barrett, he was mentioning that Kevin Owens told Sami Zayn not to go back to Talk to, or talk yeah. to Jay, and then now this kind of... Damn it. I didn't factor that into the equation. Into he something. tried to tell him not to. Mm-hmm. And then now, you know, we got an injured... Uh, Kevin Owens looked like, what, a smashed knee, leg, I guess you could say, what? Yeah. Yeah, man, like you were saying, now we don't have a protector for the Sami Zayn side of this. Yeah, I mean, it's no doubt that... Numbers game. Yeah, that Sami Zayn is about to get cheated out. I mean, mm-hmm. it's just kind of how it is. Um, sorry, I'm real time right now because we're on a commercial break. I'm just looking at my phone and I'm just looking at some tweets and man, the uh, the draft is taking the the waves right now. Okay, people are talking about it. They're talking about how they really want this to be a big deal. They really want this to be a brand split, and that is music to my freaking ears right there, dude. You don't got to bring back the world heavyweight championship. You can just leave the championships as they are. I literally don't even care at this point. Just give me the structure of a brand split, and you're going to get a good product. That's just how it is. I mean, it's just fact. Every time the WWE has been a badass product, it's because they have a brand split. It's not always because. I know that's a it's a strong word, but it's usually no coincidence that they're, you know, it's the middle of a brand split whenever, you know, they're doing it. So hopefully they can stay true to it this go around. And uh, that's really all I'm going to be thinking about for the next few weeks in terms of wrestling Okay, is uh, that draft. They they really – bravo, I, I will say. I oh, like yeah. whenever we get oh, yeah. good news, big news here on SmackDown because guess what? We're the ones that get to talk about it first. There you go. Mm, and we're the last leg on the relay team. Mm, I love it. Definitely a shout-out to you guys, obviously, the listeners, for sticking around with us. We're, we're continuing to do this live review format. I do think that it's – Pretty fun. You know, we've gotten positive feedback. People say that oh, they yeah. like it. It's oh, something yeah. new. So uh, I'm down with it as long as time allows it and, you know, our schedules allow it. Obviously, we talked about it a couple Fridays whenever the round, whenever day two of the draft, rounds two and three. Probably going to put a little bit of a uh, a fork in the plans. But we will cross that bridge whenever we get there. Who knows? Maybe uh, Maybe we can just make it all work out, you know? It's happened before in the past. I'm sure it could happen again. There you go. But it looks like we're going to be coming back from commercial break here pretty soon, and we're going to get this main event match. Um, I'm guessing you're picking Jey Uso to win, huh? Oh, yeah. Definitely going to ride with him. I mean, of course, not going to switch up or anything like that. But I do want to give a shout-out 
getting Shinsuke not oh, yeah. next week. So great, that's great a good point. little yeah. uh, bring back, I guess you could say. It feels like it's been a good amount of time. I was I asked you if what was going on with him. Maybe you said just some vacay time and yeah, stuff like time that. Off. But, I don't yeah. think he had any injury or anything like that. Yeah, bringing him back definitely be a good thing. But with you saying the or, of course, the draft being kind of coming up, we're going to get him for... I think maybe a couple of times. I, yeah, I think he'll knows? be one of the people that go over to Raw. For you think reason. so? Oh, hey, that's a hunch. That's a hunch. But mm-hmm. since he's coming back next week, we also get LA Knight versus Xavier Rhodes next week. That Rhodes. match is officially announced. Mm, thinking about Cody or what? Did I say Rhodes? Yep. Xavier Woods. <laughs> Sorry, guys. But uh, nonetheless, we are going to get a, a nice little, nice little program between LA Knight and Xavier. So. Hopefully, LA Knight does a little bit better than what happened the last time between these two. You know, given Xavier Woods got the win the last time. Yeah, LA Knight was one of my first picks in our little draft that we had. And if he loses to Xavier Woods, that would be a pretty uh, pretty big blow. But I'm going to go ahead and pause this, this being the show. We're going to see what's going on with Sami Zayn. We'll be right back. All right, the main event just wrapped up. Uh, I don't even, I mean, I'm still kind of, you know, processing it all, but I mean, it was a good match. Like we would expect Sami Zayn looked like he was going to close out. It looked like he was in control for a majority of it until we got that Samoan spike from the outside of the ring from none other than Solo Sokoa. Jey Uso hits a jumping super kick, like a leaping one. I don't know if I've seen him break that out. Oh no. Yeah. That was pretty. At least for a finisher. I mean, that's, that was wild, but that is, um, how he ends up. Stealing this win. Afterwards, we get Sol Zakoa putting a beat down on Sami Zayn, and he's about to hit another Samoan spike on him. Jey Uso steps in and stops him, and I'm like, what the hell's going on here? Like, are we going to see something? And then a super kick to Sami Zayn, and they continue to uh, try to put a beat down on him. They get a chair, but an, an unexpected ally shows up. Speak of the devil. Yeah. Matt yeah. Riddle shows up sprints out there, you know, rolls in the ring, does what he has to do to make light work of Jay and Solo Sokoa, saving Sami Zayn. And according to Michael Cole, the bloodline has a new dangerous enemy. I like this. He needed some help. We thought that he was going to be screwed once KO got injured. And sure enough, he does have somebody come out to help him, that person being Matt Riddle. What do you think about the main event and the things that happened afterwards? Well, I mean, of course, it was a good match. Like you said, uh, felt like Sammy, you know, was in control of that whole thing for a good minute. But the ending, man, was definitely, like, raise the eyebrows right there. The whole stopping of the small and spike, you know, the face-to-face between Jay and Solo. I thought it was going to kind of, you know, maybe some gums bumping on that side of it, you know. But, yeah, of course, Solo, you know, a little silent type still. But, yeah, the whole... Uh, Super kick was a surprise right there, but I guess Jay, he has to be the one to, you know, take out Sammy, I guess you could say in a way, but um, Matt Riddle, man, like I said, I did did not see the return of him on Raw, but for him to come out, you know, after being talked about and stuff like that, wasn't too happy about it, kind of felt like a little, like downplayed, I guess you could say, I felt like somebody else could have came out and helped Sammy or something, maybe Cody Rhodes, but... What happened with that? He is resting four or five broken <laughs> ribs right now, bud, in case you forgot the, the tables, the he, stairs, together, man. the he chairs. Gosh, no, I'm just kidding. But, yeah, the Matt Riddle thing, you know, kind of just threw me off. But, I mean, good to see him back and everything like that. Hopefully he's in better shape and everything mentally and I guess you could say physically as well. Yeah, and a draft pick for SmackDown, hopefully. Mm-hmm. That's what, what I nice. would like for sure. But that does do it for John and I here on the SmackDown Review. Thank you guys so much for joining us along this uh, this ride, for watching SmackDown with us, pretty much. That's that's how we look at it now. For those of you who listen to the SmackDown Review, you technically are watching SmackDown along with us, already knowing what happened, most likely. So that's uh, that's one plus. Definitely want to give another shout out to uh, you know everybody here on the WWE podcast team, especially Matt for reaching the uh, the the very high rankings. Oh, yeah. You know WrestleMania oh, weekend, gosh. it always kind of boosts, but that's nothing to sneeze at. You know, cracking the top twenty that's that's some damn good stuff. Definitely deserves a, a nice pat on the back. Shout out to all the listeners, everybody who communicates in the Discord. 
Hope you guys all have a damn good weekend. Hope you guys all have a damn good Easter as well. Wanted to, you know, definitely throw that in there. And if you don't celebrate Easter, you know, have a you know, have a, just a good weekend. You know, just enjoy time off or whatever. Hopefully it's good weather wherever you are where you can take advantage of that Sunday. But, um, John, you got anything? Well, yeah, definitely want to, you know, felt like you did a good closing up right there. Don't think I'm going to top it. But definitely want to give a shout out to the listeners and everything like that. Definitely appreciate y'all for making this part of y'all's week. And, of course, football function. Starting to, yes. li- or we listened to the wide receiver, what would you say? Prospect, pros- pros- or prospect yeah, discussion going out to the ranch today so that was pretty good um isaiah in the back he was pretty interested with what you had to say and everything like that so he's he's a pretty big uh football guy i guess nice. you could say yeah. so yeah he asked me if it was like on apple music and everything like that so pretty sure you got you another listener right there man hell yeah that's what i like to hear and you know if you're listening to the football function why don't you go tell a friend that's there always a good way that's there always a good go. way to, to spread the word there but nonetheless i do appreciate all you guys um we'll be back next week to talk about some more juicy stuff you know some good stuff coming on raw obviously we got that tag team match probably some more developments with cody rhodes brock lesnar i don't expect to see cody rhodes on smackdown anytime soon unless he's drafted over there he he barely made appearances whenever he was literally feuding with roman so to, just to randomly help sammy I, I don't think he's going to to dip his toes in those waters but hey i would have loved to hear that i would have loved to see that happen i think but, that would have been a better way to end the show you know pop yeah and everything like that. it would have maybe you know made the crowd feel a little bit better but yeah. introducing matt riddle into this whole thing is definitely a twist yeah, for definitely sure definitely wasn't mad at it i mean of course uh michael cole said you know some unfinished business from what they had going on before so it kind of plays in yeah and then obviously the xavier woods la night just so many good things coming next week. Definitely going to want to tune in to hear our live breakdown. But one more time, guys, thank you so much. Have a damn good weekend. Happy Easter. Walk passionately in the direction of your dreams. And we'll talk to you soon. Go Celtics. Thanks for listening to the WWE Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe on your favorite podcast app so you don't miss a show. Or head to wwepodcast.com. And for all of these shows ad-free, head over to patreon.com slash WWE podcast. Until then, we'll see you next time.